everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be crocheting this ruffle sleeve cardigan. It's really, really easy. In fact, you won't believe how beginner friendly this cardigan is and it is in sizes extra small all the way up to 3XL. I'll be making the medium size here in this video, um, but if you need to see the adjustments in the written pattern, just click that link in the description box below and that will take you to the written pattern where there are all kinds of adjustments for all of those different sizes and all of the measurements you need and all of that good stuff. So the yarn I'm going to be using today is Lion Brand Jeans Colors. This is a brand new yarn from Lion Brand. You might be familiar with the regular line of jeans um, with all of those beautiful different denim washes. Um, I've seen those at my local Joann's. This is exactly the same yarn. It's just different colors and I'm going to be using this taupey color. It's called khaki. Um, I really love it. It's a really pretty neutral that has some different tones in it. It is a category four weight yarn, but it is a little bit on the lighter side of a four. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're substituting for a different worsted weight yarn. I do really like this jeans colors yarn though because it's really really soft especially for an acrylic worsted weight and I love that it has those different tones in the yarn so I definitely highly recommend this one um, very soon there's going to be a kit available for this pattern in all of those sizes that I mentioned from lionbrand.com and that link will be in the description box below when it becomes available as well and you will get all the yarn you need plus um, a printed version of the written pattern I'm also going to be using a size J hook. So you're going to need a J crochet hook for this particular pattern. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to create three different panels. We're going to sew them together and then we're going to add the sleeves. That's all we have to do. The panels are really straightforward. There's no shaping. It's just three rectangles. Super easy and we're just going to use double crochet for almost this entire pattern. There's not going to be any increasing or decreasing for these panels. They're just going to be straightforward rectangles. If you can make a scarf, you can make this uh, cardigan. I really, I promise it. It's really not difficult. I know that making clothes always looks really difficult, but just stay with me here. I think that we can do this together. What do you think? So I'm just going to go ahead and start by finding my end, which is taking me a minute because this yarn's just a little bit tangly, but you know, worsted weight can do that. I also pulled out way too big a chunk from that center. That was my fault. Don't blame the jeans. Okay, so once I find this end and untangle things, I'm going to start by making a slip knot. So just go ahead and make a slip knot however you know how. Lots of great videos on that all over YouTube. So get that slip knot onto your hook. And then I'm going to start by just making a foundation chain. All of my panels will start with a foundation chain. Depending on your size, you're going to make a different number of stitches. Remember, chain is just yarn over and pull through. For the medium size here, I'm starting with the back panel, and then I'll make the front panels next. The medium size is going to get 68 foundation chains. So this is the largest panel, and we're going to go ahead and get it out of the way first. 68 foundation chains. Again, the written pattern is really simple to read and really straightforward. So even if you're not super familiar with written patterns, you should be able to follow that one. Um, and it just has the different adjustments for the different uh, sizes. So once you have all the foundation chains you need, um, this is what it should look like, give or take some chains depending on your size. Again, I'm making the medium. So 68, I'm going to double crochet in the fourth chain from my hook. So let's count it down. One, two, three, and four. I'm going to double crochet. So one, two, three, and four. Right there. So yarn over. We're going to insert our hook in that stitch, the fourth one. We're going to pull up a loop. We have three loops on the hook. We're going to finish our double crochet by yarning over, pulling through two loops, yarn over, and pull through the last two. That's all there is to double crochet, so there's a little refresher for you. Um, if you're still learning or are unfamiliar with double crochet, so we're just going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So this next stitch is also going to get a regular double crochet. Make sure your tension is nice and relaxed. You don't want any uh, tense hands because it might 
cause some gauge issues with your garment. So just go ahead and double crochet all the way down. Speaking of gauge also, I would recommend that you make a gauge swatch. I do have the measurements for a four by four inch gauge swatch on the written pattern. Um, it definitely will help you to make sure that your cardigan will come out the right size. But if your size variance is a little off from my measurements, not the end of the world. This is an oversized cardigan, so I think you'll be okay. So here I have row one done. I've double crocheted in each stitch all the way across. This is what it should look like. It should be laying pretty flat. If you have any curling, that means that your foundation chain was too tight. So go ahead and redo that before you get any further. We're gonna chain two and we're gonna turn our work. So go ahead and flip this over so that we're always working from right to left. And we're just gonna double crochet in the very first stitch. So we don't wanna skip that first stitch. We wanna work into it so that our edges are always straight. And I'll show you what I mean. We're not going to skip this first one. We're going to work into it. So again, regular double crochet. We're going to yarn over. And what I mean by that first stitch is the one right next to our chain two. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is what it should be looking like. Double crochet right next to that chain two. And that will keep our edges straight. So now we're just going to double crochet in each stitch all the way along this entire row, just like we did with row one. Just all double crochets here. And basically this is all we're gonna be doing. We're gonna double crochet in each stitch all the way across until you've completed the appropriate number of rows for your sizing. Again, listed in the written pattern in the description box below. Just click that link there and it'll take you right to the free pattern on my blog. Scroll down past all the pretty pictures and you'll see the free pattern where all of the sizing adjustments live. So I'm almost to the end of row two here. I just wanna show you how I finish this up because I'm double crocheting all the way across. And in order to keep those edges straight, I double crocheted in the very first stitch. But here when I get to the end, I want to make sure that I just work into the last stitch. I don't work into the turning chain. So here I am working into the very last stitch, regular double crochet, as always. But make sure that you don't stitch into that turning chain from the row below. Otherwise, you'll be, if you do, you'll be adding stitches each row and you'll be creating a trapezoid shape, which is not what we want. So go ahead and chain two and turn, and we're just gonna keep repeating this. You'll notice in the written pattern that there's a line that says repeat row two a number of times, and you just have to identify which number is your number for your size. For me, making size medium, I'm gonna repeat that 50 more times. So I should have a total of 52 rows. And I do have some measurements listed there in the written pattern as well, just to help you out and make sure that you're kind of on track and things aren't kind of wonky and all over the place. So this is how things should be looking. Again, I stitched in that very first stitch. My edges should be looking really straight. I'm just gonna keep on going here and make all 50 rows of double crochet and just work back and forth until you have the proper number of rows and then finish off your yarn. I'm going to start my front panels here real quick so I can show you how I do those. Very, very similar to the back panel. We're going to basically make two front panels that are the same length but half the width so that we have an opening in the front of our cardigan to uh, take it on and off. So I'll show you how I do that. We're going to start with a foundation chain once again. Your foundation chain number here will be different than your back panel. It should be roughly about half of what you chained for your back panel. For me, size medium, we're going to chain 35 stitches. We're going to make two front panels, like I said, so make sure that you do this twice, otherwise you're going to have quite a lopsided cardigan. So here I have my uh, chain of 35. I'm going to double crochet once again in the fourth hook from my chain, or from my hook, I should say, fourth chain from my hook. Regular double crochet once again. We're gonna double crochet in each stitch along, and if this is sounding a little repetitive, it's because we're doing exactly the same thing that we did on our back panel. So really, like I said, the only thing that changes from back to front panels is the number of chains everything else is the same. We're going to make the same stitches and the same number of rows so that we have the same length front to back. Everything else is the same. So really you're just changing the number of chains and then with the front panels of course you'll make two of them as opposed to just one. 
So you can see here I worked all the way across. This is what it should look like. Just row one here finished. Chain up two and turn. Everything in the written pattern is uh, listed the same way that it is with the back panel. I also have those measurements. So when you complete your designated number of rows, um, again for me, the size medium is gonna be 50 rows just like with the back panel so that we have the same length. And I will have those measurements listed out as well for what each of those front panels should be roughly. Again, if you give or take an inch or two, it's really not gonna make a huge difference. Um, so don't be too worried if you make this whole piece and it's, you know, half of an inch off. I think it'll be okay. So there I am just finishing the end of row two. Again, don't stitch in that turning chain, remember. Chain up two and turn. We're just going to keep going with this. Once we finish our back panel and both front panels, we're just going to finish each of those off and weave all of our ends and I'm going to catch back up with you here to assemble. So hopefully you've spent a while crocheting and you have three panels done. You should have one back panel that's quite large. You should have two front panels that are quite long and skinny. And if you lay these next to each other, they're going to look almost like another back panel. Tricky, huh? So here's my front panels and my back panel. We're going to sew this baby up. I'm going to weave all these loose ends here first just because I don't want them getting in the way when I'm trying to sew. So to sew it up, we're going to need a tapestry needle. We're going to cut a long piece of yarn, much more than you think you'll need, just so that you have plenty and we don't have extra ends to weave in. I'm going to create a knot in the end of the yarn and then I'm going to grab my back panel. I'm going to place my right sides together. So if you look at your foundation chains, they should be on the same end of things. And you should have like sides together. Now I'm going to mark off where my armhole is going to be. This information is listed in the written pattern. All the sizes are going to have different armhole lengths, so just measure that and place stitch markers. Now I'm going to leave those armholes open and I'm going to seam up the rest of the side. So between the stitch markers, do not stitch that closed or you won't have a place to put your arms through your cardigan. But go ahead and sew right under that second stitch marker. I'm going to always come from the inside and what I mean by the inside is between those two panels and I'm going to mattress stitch. This is called a mattress stitch and we're just going to weave in and out, always coming from the inside to the outside. So where the right sides are placed together, we're going to always insert our needle there and come out where the wrong sides are. Now I'm just working around the last stitch in each row. If you work any further in than that, it's going to create kind of a bulky seam. It's not going to lay very nicely and you're going to really be able to see it. So here on my sample, I'm going to leave an opening here at the bottom. My opening is probably maybe two, two and a half inches long um, just to create kind of a slit on the hip area. It's going to make my cardigan a little bit more flowy and it's going to give me a little extra breathing room in the hip um, and I like that it has a fun little detail rather than just being all sewn up. So I'm just going to back stitch this a couple times. Wherever I want my hip slit to land I'm just going to stitch over that last stitch two or three times. I have my armhole opening up here. And now I just need to go ahead and weave that end. So after we've finished the side seam, we're obviously going to need to um, sew up the other side seam exactly the same way. Go ahead and make sure that you measure off your armhole appropriately and you leave a hip slit if you did on the first side. Now we just need to seam up the shoulders. So this is really, really simple. We're just going to seam up the tops of those panels. So we should be sewing through the tops of the stitches and you just want to sew back and forth, always coming again from the inside out or between those panels out. You can whip stitch this close too where you kind of go around and around, but I think it's more obvious to see those stitches and I find that the mattress stitch holds up to wear a little bit better, um, but that's just my personal preference. Any way that you like stitching things together is fine with me. So just go ahead and stitch along. All the way, we're going to need to repeat this whole process on the other side. 
If you'd like to, you can go ahead and keep continuing on um, doing the other shoulder right now. If you have enough yarn on your strand, you can just kind of scooch on over. You should only have one skipped stitch between your two panels that's on the back panel. And I'll show you what I mean in a little bit when we do our edging. But when you lay both front panels onto your back panels to seam them up, you should have one stitch in the middle that will be unworked between your two front panels. So once you get all the way across here, I'm just going to weave that end because I don't have enough yarn to continue on um, with the other shoulder seam. But you can see here how the shoulder seam will look. You can see where those lines of double crochet meet, but it's a really clean finish um, and it looks really polished. So we're just gonna weave that end and repeat everything you saw here on the other side so that you'll have both side seams done and the shoulder seam done all the way across. And make sure that all of your ends are woven before moving on because it's just gonna make things easier. Now I'm gonna turn my sample inside out so that my right sides are facing out to do this edging. So you can see here what the seams look like when you'll be wearing it. Nice and clean, everything is joined nicely and my rows of double crochet kind of match up. You can see the side seam if you really look for it, but people who don't crochet aren't gonna notice it. It's not obvious or bulky in any way. So we can see here how my uh, hip slits look, and now we need to do the edging. So I'm going to edge around the hemline of my cardigan and around the neckline, or that opening between the two front panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join my yarn to one of these edging corners. I'm going to go with this one right here that's kind of on the right side um, of the neckline. If you are left hand dominant, you're going to want to basically just do the reverse of this and join to the left side of the neckline opening or your left front panel. But I'm right hand dominant, so I'm going to join on my right front panel. I'm just going to join to that last stitch or that last uh, chain to my turning chain from that row. We should have all of our foundation chain um, along the hemline of the cardigan, but if you did sew it up at the shoulder seam, that's totally fine too. It really doesn't make a big difference which way you do that. So I've joined my yarn, I'm gonna chain up one, and I'm gonna do my edging in single crochet just because I think it gives um, kind of a nice clean like piping look to the edging. You could do this in double crochet if you really wanted to, but I like single crochet for edging. So I'm just gonna chain up one, and basically I'm just gonna single crochet along this rough edge, which is of my front panel, my first front panel. I'm just gonna single crochet evenly along the rough edge. So I'll show you how I do that. I'm just going to single crochet in these spots that are kind of along the edge of the row of double crochet. For me, in order to single crochet evenly with my tension, it wound up being that I would single crochet about three times for each two rows of double crochet. Double crochets are fairly long stitches, and when you're working edging into the end of those rows of double crochet, just doing one stitch per row really wasn't working for me. It was creating some pulling and puckering and it really just wasn't laying nice and flat. So you can kind of see here that I have three single crochet stitches for each of those two rows of double crochet. But if that makes no sense to you and you find out a way to do it that works for you and looks nice and flat, just stitch along and don't worry about me. Any way that you find to single crochet along this rough edge and it lays nice and flat is gonna be perfect. So you're just going to stitch all the way along up to the uh, neckline where you have those shoulder seams and you have that open stitch. And I'll show you what we do up there. It's really, really easy, so don't get worried about doing anything fancy back up here at the neckline. I also like to keep the edging really simple because it just lets the other details of the cardigan um, and the drape of it kind of shine without having a frilly... Um, complicated border. I just like to keep things simple and have nice straight clean lines so that all of the eyes go to those ruffles on the sleeves that we'll get to in just a minute. 
So once you work all the way back up here to kind of the back of the neck area, you're going to have your shoulder seams, and then you're going to have a stitch or two that are left open here right at the back of the neck. So I just am gonna stitch right along until I have no more of that rough edge to work into. So here, I, that's my last one. And here I have two open stitches. I want to say that when I finally wrote up this pattern, my sample was off by a stitch. So it's really not the end of the world if it's one stitch that's off here at the back of the neck, whether you have one stitch open or two. But either way, just go ahead and work into each of those stitches, whether you have one or two, um, and then just go ahead and continue on with the other front panel down the other side. So this is how it should be looking. It's just gonna kind of fill in that gap there between the front panels and make everything fill in nicely and create a nice uh, curved neckline that's very comfortable to wear. So just go ahead and maneuver this thing around and single crochet back down the other side of your second front panel. And once we get down to the hemline again, we're basically just gonna work all the way around the hemline all at once. So we're gonna just work this in one big continuous around um, until we get back to where we started. So here at the corner, when we get to the corner here to turn and go down the hemline, I'm gonna work three single crochets into that corner and each of our corners around the hemline. So just right in that corner, I worked three single crochets. That's just gonna kind of give us a nice, uh, clean corner turn here. And then I'm going to work a single crochet into each stitch around the hemline. So this is just, I'm working into the other side of the foundation chain at this point because my foundation chain is at the bottom around the hem. So it's really, really straightforward. You can see exactly where you need to stitch. It's nice and clean. And we can just kind of zoom along here to the hip slit area. So here is where I left that hip opening. This is really easy to, if you wanted to go ahead and stitch that up and not have a hip opening when you did your side seams, you can just keep on continuing around and ignore um, how I do this hip slit real quick. But if you did leave an opening like I did, don't worry, This is if you've got to this point, you can finish this guy. So easy. We're gonna just work three single crochets into each of these corners, and we're gonna single crochet into all of those rough edges as we already have. So here I'm working the last uh, stitches of that first front panel, three single crochets into that corner before we turn to go up the rough edge. So there are those. I'm gonna single crochet along this rough edge just as I did with those front panel neckline edges. So same thing I've been doing. This should look pretty familiar. And once we stitch along this rough edge and we get to um, kind of where we joined things, it's really, really simple. Almost there. I didn't want to speed this up and rush you guys too much, so we'll just, we'll stitch together. Okay, so here we are. We're up here where we joined our side seam, and we can see where that join is there, right there. That's where we back stitch. You can see those kind of extra stitches. I'm just going to skip on over it and single crochet in that first spot on the other piece of the hip slit. So where you see that you backstitched, just skip on over it and then work down that other rough edge. So there's my backstitch, just skip it and keep going. Now from here on out, the rest of this round is really, really easy. We're just gonna single crochet down that other rough side. We'll turn the corner and we'll work across the back. So at this point, you've done all of the complicated things that you're going to do. The sleeves are way easier than you think they are, I promise. And we are almost home free. So once you work all the way down to this next corner, again, in order to turn the corner, we're gonna work three single crochets, just like we did over here on that corner. 
So three single crochets into that corner before we turn to work down the back panel. There's two and three. And now we're just going to single crochet into each of these foundation chain stitches all the way across the back panel. Really, really simple and straightforward. After we've worked all the way across the back panel, you can see how that should be looking. We should be starting to see a really nice edge and a really finished looking uh, body to our cardigan. It should be really starting to take shape. So go ahead and work all the way across. We're going to repeat the same thing we did with the other hip slit and the other front panel working into those foundation chains. So just repeat what we've done up until this point on the other side and I will catch up with you um, once we get back around to about where we started and where we joined that yarn for the edging. So I'm just going to do one more round of single crochets and I'll show you how I get started with that. I've worked all the way back to where I started on this very first corner. And once I get back around here, basically I'm just going to make one more round of single crochet the same way that I did the first time, but it's going to be a lot easier this time because I'm working into actual stitches instead of into rough edges. So here I am working the last couple of stitches and in this first corner notice I'm not going to work any extra stitches in that corner because the chain two kind of gives us that extra breathing room that we would need um, or the chain one I'm sorry to kind of make things lay nice and flat. So here in the second round of the edging I'm just going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. I'm not going to work any extra stitches into any of the corners on round two just regular single crochet. Those three single crochet clusters in the corners on the first round are going to give us plenty of uh, definition on the corner where we don't need to do that again in the second round. So you can see here how this should be looking. It's just going to kind of thicken up that edging just a little bit to kind of give it a nice defined edge and I really like the way it looks with the second round. Now once I've gone all the way back around doing exactly the first thing, the same thing I did on the first round, just working one single crochet this time in each stitch all the way around, I'm just going to slip stitch to join to the, my first stitch of the second round. So just slip stitch, join that together, finish it off nicely and weave that end. Really simple and straightforward. Now all we have left to do are the sleeves. And like I said earlier, you're not going to believe how easy these sleeves are. I know that the ruffle looks maybe a little complicated or it looks sophisticated or um, it might look like something you don't know how to do, but I promise you do. You just don't know it yet. So go ahead and make sure all those ends are woven, especially the ones from your side seams, because if you still have ends hanging around from those side seams, they're going to get in the way at this point. So just go ahead and weave in any loose ends you have. And when you're ready to get started on those sleeves, we're going to come back up to uh, the armhole opening. We're going to be joining our yarn right onto the armhole opening and stitching around that rough edge. Um, so we're not going to be crocheting a separate piece and then sewing it on. We're just going to work right off of that armhole so that we know that everything will fit absolutely perfectly and there won't be any bunching or uh, any strange things happening when we assemble. So the way in which we're going to do this is we're going to make sure everything is nice and flatly laid out. We don't want a big heaping mess where we don't know where we're stitching. That's our armhole opening right there. Then we're going to take our yarn, we're going to create a slip knot, leaving a tail long enough to weave in later. So here we have a little slip knot. We're going to get that onto our hook, then we're going to remove it from our hook so that we can join that yarn securely to our armhole opening. So I'm going to join and create my armhole, my sleeve, um, by starting at the what is going to be the underarm area. So I'll flip this around so that you can see more clearly. This underarm area right where the side seam 
uh, started is where I'm going to join my yarn because the sleeves will have a seam to them, but if you join right here, that seam will lie on your underarm area and it will be almost unnoticeable to someone who did not make the garment themselves. So join right there, chain up two, get your tail out of the way. I like to tuck it inside the sweater. And we're going to double crochet in each stitch all the way around the armhole opening. So just one regular double crochet. Again, we're working into a rough edge here, so into the ends of the rows. And however you need to position this to be comfortable um, is fine. Just make sure that you can see kind of most of the armhole area. So double crochet in each stitch around. Whatever method you used to um, work into the rough edge of the uh, neckline is the same method that you need to use here to make sure that you're not working a ton of extra stitches or too few stitches. So just regular double crochet each stitch around for the entirety of this armhole. So you can see here how this should be looking. It should be laying pretty flat. You shouldn't have any crazy stretching or any ruffling at this point. We're gonna work the ruffle in just a second. So just go ahead and double crochet in each stitch all the way around. I'm just gonna show you one sleeve here because you're gonna repeat the exact same thing on the other side. Um, so otherwise you'll be here all night, so. Also, it's worth mentioning that no matter what size you're making and what size armhole opening you left, depending on that measurement that's given in the written pattern for the armhole depth, um, it doesn't matter what size, you're going to do this same process exactly the same way. I do have the stitch counts listed in the written pattern linked in the description box, um, but if you're varying from that by a stitch or two, um, it's not completely... Uh, gonna throw everything off so don't worry too much about that stitch as evenly as you can around um, and just follow the same process I am in this video no matter what size you're making so once we've worked all the way around we're gonna slip stitch to join we do need to do that here on the sleeves even though it will create a little bit of a seam just be patient with me here folks so we're gonna slip stitch we're gonna chain two and this is how it should be looking at this point it should be a nice kind of finished edge to the armhole opening right now so this is about how we're looking. Now we have a nice clean edge to work from to start our ruffle. So get a load of this, guys. We're going to work two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. Two in every stitch. So you can see here how I'm doing this. Look at that. Two stitches in the first, two in the second. Go ahead and work this all the way around. Now I can tell you before you even get going on this that you're going to get about halfway around this armhole and you're going to think that I'm crazy because you're going to have way too many stitches for this armhole. See it's already starting to like look like too many. It's going to make you a little uncomfortable. It's going to make you want to stop but just keep going. Trust me on this. This is what creates the ruffle right here working two stitches, regular double crochets, and each stitch all the way around, you can see here that things are starting to kind of go awry, and I'm not even halfway around. Once you get all the way around, you're going to feel like this is becoming a mess. It's going to look messy, you're not going to like it, but just bear with me. It'll be all worth it so fast. This is the only row also, row two, is the only row where you have to do anything funky. So this two double crochets in each stitch all the way around is the only time on this sleeve you're going to do anything out of the ordinary. So this is how it should be looking. Row two is done. I have tons of stitches. It's flaring out. It looks like too many. It looks like a mess. It doesn't look like it's ever going to look good again, right? Well now we're just going to work a bunch more rows of regular double crochet. So for row three, again, we slip stitch to join at the end of row two. We chained up two. We're going to do that with every round of the sleeves. After we've chained up two for row three, we're just going to double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And we're going to keep repeating that for however many rounds you need, depending on your size. Size medium is going to get seven more rounds 
of regular double crochet after row three. So you can see here, I am working into every single stitch. Again, and this is still going to feel like too many stitches. For me, size medium, I have about 54 stitches in my round, which you'll notice is very close to the same number of stitches that's all the way across the back panel. And my arms are not that wide. I don't have arms as wide as my waist. But this is what's going to create the ruffle. It's going to create a little extra volume in the sleeve by having all those extra stitches. And when you wear this garment, it's going to fall and fold and gather, and it's going to look so feminine and pretty. And no one will know that it looked this messy before it was done. So go ahead and work tons of double crochets. From here on out, remember, we're just working one double crochet in each stitch around. Consult that written pattern to see how many more rows of regular double crochet you need to make. Here I am. I have finished my repeat. So for me at this point, I have made 10 rows of stitching on this sleeve. I made my first two rows. I did that two double crochet in each stitch. I made my row three of regular double crochet, and then I repeated row three seven more times. Total of 10 rows on this sleeve so far and you can start to see kind of this flare out and the ruffle when you wear it it's going to drape really nicely we can see the seam here but again that's on the underarm and it's really not very noticeable don't worry too much about it so this is how we're looking I'm going to add a little edging to this just to make it match my edging on the rest of the cardigan so after I've worked my repeat of my regular double crochets on that last row, I'm just going to slip stitch to join. I'm just going to chain up one because to edge the sleeves, I'm just going to work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around, just like we did with our edging on the body of the cardigan, just regular single crochets, nothing fancy. It's just going to nicely edge it out and make it match um, the hemline. It's worth the extra step, I think. It makes it look real polished. So no matter what size you're making, you're going to make your different number of um, repeated row threes, regular double crochets. Make sure you check on how many rows that is so you have the correct length for your sleeve. And if you want to adjust this at all, if you look at how this fits me um, in the pictures on my blog or at the beginning or end of this video, and you want shorter sleeves or longer sleeves or you're trying it on as you go and you want a bit longer before you do your edging, or something like that, go ahead and make those adjustments. I'm not the pattern police. You can do whatever you want to custom make your clothes the way you want. So after I've single crocheted all the way around, I'm just gonna finish this off and weave that end and I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other sleeve. Nice big voluminous sleeve that's gonna hang like a gathered ruffled uh, sleeve on this cardigan and it's going to also create a lot of airflow in this cardigan for the spring and summer months which I know for me in Florida is very very important. So just go ahead and finish off. You should just have a couple of ends to weave in and once you do that other sleeve you are good to go. This cardigan is all finished um, and you can just go ahead and pop it on and get ready to head out on the town with it. You can wear it over pajamas. You can wear it over a fancy dress. You can make it in any color. This really is one of the most versatile patterns I think I've ever designed. And I'm so, so happy with how it came out, especially using that jeans colors yarn. Just look at how uh, just vibrant that khaki is in the light. I just love it. I hope you guys really enjoyed this free pattern and this video tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more crafty videos. Thanks so much. See you next time.